Hey guys, Dr. Nate here. So for today's video, um, one in culmination with Diamond League finals that just finished up yesterday. Um, so it marks sort of the end of the 2022 track and field season. And then now that, oh, it's just feeling like fall outside. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but uh, when fall comes around, I start to get pretty happy. Um, it just reminds me of um, so many good times, uh, cross country season, um, just, just the wet. I don't, I don't even know what it is. I can't describe how how it makes me feel, but it makes me feel great on the inside. So um, I'm sure I'm not the only one. So feel free to leave a comment if you're also a weirdo um, and feel the same things uh, as soon as the the weather starts to cool. At least here in Calgary, it seemed the day that September came, um, fall decided to show up. Uh, so it's just it's just crazy. So with those two things, I want to do this video, which is a little bit different than the reviews that I've do, been doing in the past. So I want to talk about my five favorite running books. Uh, so for those of you who know me, know that I'm a, I love to read books. Um, you know, books about running, books about endurance sports, um, books about ph physiology, um, fictional books. I love to read books on Navy SEALs, that kind of stuff. Um, so I just want to talk about my five favorite running books, which was a very difficult video to make um, because I have a lot more than five of my favorites. And um, I also am not very good at picking a favorite. So this book, this is by no means the best running books out there, but five that I sort of brought it down to and I thought they would be good ones to highlight because some of these you may not have heard of before. Um, and if you haven't, add them to your list and read them. Um, they're, they're just all very fascinating reads and you're gonna get something um, from each and every one of them. Um, so it, these are in no order ranked or by which I've liked the best or not. It's just sort of what I picked out first. Um, so the first one, I'm gonna start off with a fictional book, Once a Runner uh, by John L. Parker Jr. This is a sort of a cult running classic. Um, not surprising. I It took me a long time to read this book, not a long time to actually read it once I started, but, um, in order to actually pick up this book. I had it sitting on the shelf for so long and I've, I've never really been the biggest fan of fiction books. I've always just leaned towards nonfiction, um, but sometimes you're just in the mood for to listen to a story. Um, so I didn't actually read this book till about maybe two years ago. Um, and man, I wish I didn't wait so long if you're if you're struggling with starting this one, um, it's fantastic. Follows main character Quinn Cassidy um, through his high school career uh, as a runner. And anyone who has run at some point in the past, especially if you've run, you know, high school cross country or track or anything like that, you're gonna really relate to this book. Uh, it's called Once a Runner for a Reason. Um, and some of us all were once a runner. <laughs> so if you're looking for something to just read, uh, pick up and not want to put, put down just a page turner, uh, definitely add this one to your list. It's a super easy read. It's pretty short as well. So if you, you know, you're like, I don't want to commit to this huge novel. Um, this is something that you're going to be able to get through in a few days, or if you just pick away at it you know, a few weeks, um, and you're not going to be disappointed. If you have any interest in endurance sports or running, um, you're going to be able to relate to this book and you're going to love it. I'll promise you that. The next book I wanted to highlight was, is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Um, so for those of you who know, Phil Knight is one of the founders of Nike. Uh, this book was amazing. Um, if you, I am, a book nerd, but I'm also a nerd on running shoes. Um, so this is sort of those two worlds combined into one book. 
sort of dives into the story of how Phil Knight started Nike, goes from the beginning of them going over, of him going over to Japan to sign a shoe deal to to bring some of the Tigers over into Canada or into the United States, um, set up their office in Portland, Oregon, and you know, selling shoes out of the back of their truck, just going to different running meets um, and selling different shoes. And then eventually them formulating their own, uh, their own shoe instead of just buying and reselling. Uh, and that is, turns into the Nike, right? Uh, but it's it's really amazing book about how, you know, at even five, ten years into them having Nike around, not necessarily being the most profitable company and them almost not being able to get funding to be able to bring more shoes over. Um, and think about where Nike is now with, you know, being on the forefront of the super shoe technology um, track spikes, all this, all this um, amazing in innovation coming from this company um, that almost didn't happen because they almost weren't able to hack it pretty much. Uh, if you've ever worked in a running store, um, they talk about, you know, the invention of the futures order in order for them to figure out how much they're going to need in the next year, which is something every company does now. Uh, there's just so many different things that uh, really tie into my life and it was just such a enjoyable read as well um, just hearing about how Phil Knight was able to get this company started um, whether or not you agree with what they do now um, whether from say the doping allegations or um, some of the different uh, questionable people that they've had working for them um, it's just it's just a great story about uh, one of America's premier running brands and now obviously sporting brands, uh, but just a really fascinating story. So the next book, the third book that I want to talk about, this one might not be as well known for some people, but it's called, called Running For My Life by Lopez Lemong. Um, Lopez is now currently an athlete at uh, the Bowerman Track Club, but this is his... Um, his pretty his biography and that he has written along with who is it mark tab so amazing story about how as a young boy i believe he was as young as like six he might have even been younger um was kidnapped in sudan which was his uh home country um by some warlords taken away from his village put into a a uh prison camp. He eventually escapes with, I believe it was two other boys. They run all the way to Kenya, where he spends about 10 years in a, um, in a refugee camp. Uh, and just incredible story about the things that he remembers from being in this refugee camp is just incredible. Um, if you're looking for a very um, heartwarming story, about uh, about someone who who against all odds was able to make a career out of just the shit hand he was he was delivered right um, this is just an incredible book and then after being in this um, refugee camp for ten years he was finally adopted brought over to Buffalo New York um, and then from there is when he really started to realize that running was more or less a sport rather than just a pastime. Um, and in, in high, I believe he was in high school when he, when he came over to the States and a cross country coach or the track coach really wanted him to come out. Um, and then this, the rest is sort of history. And now he's obviously a professional runner for BTC, um, a 5k guy. And, uh, just an amazing story. So like I said, if you're looking for something that, you know, you'll be laughing, but then you'll also be crying at some points. Um, just a really deep and emotional story. This guy running for my life, uh, Lopez Lemong, is great. A great book. Definitely check it out. The next book, uh, Bowerman and the Men of Oregon. 
uh, written by Kenny Moore. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Kenny, um, he, he was an American distance runner, ran with, you know, the likes of Frank Shorter, um, Steve Prefontaine. He is also, you know, not only an amazing athlete, but he was amazing author too. And unfortunately he has passed recently. Uh, but this is one of his, his great books. Um, another one that I, I haven't read yet, but I really want to add it to my list is I believe it's called best efforts. Um, so if you have read that and you liked it, leave a comment, um, because it's something that I do want to pick up in the future. Um, but yeah, so this book is all about one of America's greatest distance coaches, uh, Bill Bowerman, um, talks about his, his start. It pretty, I believe it, I, this was a number of years that I read it now, but it starts out before Bill is even alive. Talks about his family coming over to Eastern Oregon, um, starting a ranch out there. Then Bill's upbringing, moving closer to Oregon, or moving closer to Eugene, where he is more interested in football, turns from football coach into track coach. Um, and then tying actually into shoe dog, him and Phil Knight are the two co-founders of Nike. Um, so it's an amazing story. there, talking about how they're able to, you know, start Nike and, and develop these spikes and these shoes for American athletes. Um, everyone's heard about the infamous or maybe not infamous, but the famous waffle iron, um, which. Uh, Bill used to sort of prototype some new outsole, outer sole material um, for their shoes. Um, and everyone knows him of a, sort of a little bit of a weight weenie trying to make sure that the shoe is as light as possible, especially the track spike. Um, yeah, really in depth on how he what he coached at, at or the University of Oregon, um, talks about the Munich Olympics. Um, just really goes in depth on Bill's life. So if you're really interested in one of America's greatest coaches, uh, Bowerman and the Men of Oregon is one one of those books that uh, is really going to intrigue you. It's a little bit of a thicker read um, and can be a little bit, not necessarily dry at parts, but you sort of have to pay attention to. I know at least I do. That's kind of how I read. Um, so it's not necessarily something that you're going to be able to get through in a couple days, uh, but I promise you're going to really like this book if you do decide to pick it up. And the last one I have on my list, last but not least, uh, Running with the Buffaloes by Chris Lear. Um, just a great story about the 1998 uh, Colorado Buffs. Uh, Mark Wetmore, who's the coach of the CU, um, and Adam Goucher, who is sort of the star of the team, it follows that 1998 Buffs team. Every chapter is a different day in the cross country season that year. Um, and just talks about the mileage they're running, um, different workouts, just different dynamics between the team. Chris could not have picked a better year to, 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 uh, to sit in with the, with the team uh, and write this book. So many events happen throughout the year, and I don't want to spoil anything, but um, just such an up and down roller coaster of a book and of a season they had, uh, and especially getting into this time of year, like I had mentioned off the start of this video, um, the fall weather's here and cross country is just around the corner. So if you have any, um, any enjoyment in the sport, uh, you're going to love this book. It's one of those books that, you know, if you're lacking any motivation this time of year, pick it up and read it because you're going to want to go out and run 120 miles this week. Uh, so if that's the case, be careful. Try not to get injured. Uh, but if you need some, some inspiration, uh, read this book and, you, and you're going to and you're going to find that for sure. So those are the five books that I've outlined. There are so many more that I could have listed. Um, so many great books and you know if you guys have any recommendations for any books that i should read on running or any sort of endurance or physiology uh leave a note in the comments and i'd, I'd love to check those out and i really want to i really want to 
you know, expand that, expand the library that I got back here of different books um, that I have read. So yeah, feel free to leave a note in the comment. Um, hope you like this video. I'm going to come out with a few more like this. So um, until next time, happy running guys. We'll see